There's a way to hold the TIG welding torch that nobody teaches you, but once you try it, you're never gonna look at TIG welding the same. Let me show you. Take a look at this grip right here. This is a traditional grip of how most people hold the torch when TIG welding. I refer to this as being called an underhand grip. This is something that most people are most comfortable with, and again, it's something that's taught pretty much in most welding education. But what I'm gonna teach you here is actually a little bit naughty. We're gonna flip things around, and we are gonna position our hands so we are working on the other side of a welding exercise like like this. So instead of coming at things from the side of a welding joint like this, we are now taking on things from the top side. And again, this is why I refer to this as an overhand grip. I'm going to weld out a few exercises with you right now. Let's set the machine up. This machine here is a beauty. This is the Everlast Typhoon 230. This machine is absolutely dope. It has way more features and customized settings than I think I will ever need in my life. It's small, compact, and it comes with the water cooled option, which is absolutely life saving for a lot of these aluminum exercises. You can see the settings that I'm going to be going with here. You can pause the screen or screenshot this if you want. But honestly, these settings are not too technical or too fancy at all. Pretty basic stuff, actually. Let's keep it simple. So let's do some welding here. I am grabbing the torch and I'm going to do a basic lap joint. These joints are very straightforward and there's a ton of stuff that we can learn from them by doing this exercise with this new grip. Obviously, as I run the first half of this joint, I'm just going to run this normally and then I'm going to stop and terminate in the middle. My grip that I'm using is a traditional grip and again, I refer to this this as an underhand grip. And obviously, again, this is the one that most people are most comfortable with. So now that we've done half the joint, let's introduce how we are gonna use an overhand grip. I am literally just gonna spin the joint around so that the joint is now facing away from me. And I'm gonna repeat the exact same details. However, everything is flipped around with this joint. You can use something to elevate your wrist, which is gonna help you with comfort and visibility. And it's also gonna help to keep your hand off a hot surface. So now that you can see that my hand is now coming at it from an angle kind of over top of the joint, this is why I refer to this as an overhand grip. Now, as you start welding, literally really just try and duplicate everything that you did on the other half. We want to make sure the bottom line runs just as straight and in the same position as the other side. We want the details of stepping to be exactly the same. We want the amount of filler material to be bang on to what we used on the first half. You can see as I'm finishing up here, this is where it gets fun. Taking a look at it, you can compare the differences between the two grips that you used. You can literally compare the differences side by side. As I mentioned, take a look at the bottom line. There's a very important one with this joint. We want this to be nice and consistent from start to finish and we want the second half to be placed exactly the same as you did on the first half we don't want one side of it being placed higher or lower you get the idea take a look at the distance of stepping compared to the two halves we want this to be relatively close to what we did with the traditional underhand grip and again this is details that you can kind of pay attention to no matter what type of grip or what type of joint that you're using now taking a look at my textbook here check this out you can see in this brand new textbook that there is a lot of information on the subject of stepping distance now the subject of Stepping distance is something that's extremely important to learn early on. And when you move on to practicing joints like the one we're doing here, where we're doing half with one grip, the other half with the other grip, it is crucial to know what you're looking for with these details. They're in the book. The lap joint is a great one to start with. Give this one a try. Now, there is another joint in this textbook here that we're going to try this out with, and this is going to be the fillet joint. This one is pretty straightforward. Most people are familiar with this one, but this is another one that we can get a really good look at how consistent we can get with switching grips between the two halves. And again, start out with the underhand grip as you would normal and stop and terminate in the center. At this point, when you terminate, really try and focus on where you leave your bottom line. You're really going to try and mirror this for the second half. Now it's the same deal, really. You just flip it around so it's facing the other way. Find a way that you can position your hand or wrist so you are stable and not going to get burned. And then just go ahead and start your second pass and start welding towards the center. And this is going to be your overhand grip. This one is a ton of fun. The fillet weld is something that most of you have probably done many, many times before. Like I mentioned, this is one of the most fundamental grips that everybody gets taught in school almost without even knowing it. And this is the way that I used to weld this joint over and over when I was putting in reps, trying to get good when I was younger. But then finding this new way to try the overhand grip is a new way that you can challenge yourself. Flipping things around with the overhand grip is a really exciting way that you can make something that might be relatively easy to you way more challenging again. And when you finish, just do the same thing. Break down the differences between the two halves. And again, take a look at your lines. We want the top and bottom line pretty much mirror each other. And we want the stepping distance between the two halves to be bang on as well. This is something that's really going to help to build your consistency with whatever grip you use comfortably. Finding a way to make it more challenging for yourself makes things a lot more consistent in the long run when you go back to the stuff you're comfortable with. Now, really be careful with how much filler material you're using on this one. You can see in the book here, there's a couple diagrams that show 
show what we're looking for. This joint tends to overfill very quickly. And for somebody who's first learning, be really mindful about how much filler material you're using each step you take. Don't add too much. These ones are fun, hey? We're taking things that we may have done hundreds of times and finding a way to make things more challenging and bring them to a whole new level. But let's go even further. Check this out. This one is one of my favorite exercises to teach my advanced students. You can see here we are set up to weld around the diameter of this pipe. So the fillet joint is going to have to go around a circular object instead of a straight line. And between the two materials here, we have a mismatch in thickness as well. Pipe is a little thicker than the plate. This is what makes this exercise much more interesting and very challenging. Again, when you're welding this exercise, I've talked about this before, but bend your filler material. It's going to help you to get your hand out of the way. You can see much more clearly and you can actually maintain the correct filler material angle throughout the duration of this one a lot easier. Run the first half exactly as you normally would. The traditional underhand grip is definitely challenged a lot with this exercise if you haven't done some of these around a pipe before. It's a great way to take your fillet joint welding to the next level. It's really difficult to maintain a consistent bottom line with this one, but if you want to get good at running fillets, this is the way to do it. Try and do your stop starts as bang on as you can. We want to tie everything in nice and consistent for each stop start that you do. And again, after you finish the first half, this is when we make things more challenging. Again, find something that is going to support your wrist. This allows you to see everything much more clearly. This one is also going to be smoking hot, so don't touch it. Find blocks of wood or anything that you need to remain comfortable and sturdy as you're welding. This one's kind of cool because with the overhand side, you actually get to start from the pocket of the first side that you did with the underhand grip. However, now obviously you can see we are going the opposite way. This gives you a bit of an opportunity to actually match the size and profile. There isn't a lot of guesswork with this one. Either it blends out to match the profile of your other start or it doesn't. Just give it time and the right amount of filler. And this will absolutely give you a great start with this one. And again, as you perform each stop start as you're doing it, just try and give yourself the best chance of a good start for your next pass by finishing each pass perfectly. Don't overfill, back off nice and slow. The way that you finish each weld is the way that you start your next one. Perfect stops usually mean perfect starts. And again, this one is the same deal, except everything is flipped around and it might look a lot different. I do find this one pretty easy to see clearly, but again, just make sure you're set up so you can see everything with no problem. And now you have it. Let's take a look at the difference with this one. Let's go. We can run it all the way around like normal with a traditional underhand grip, but introducing the overhand grip for half of it makes this one a much more interesting interesting challenge. Look at how cool the start looks on this one. The two welding passes heading away from one another is a great looking feature. And after you get comfortable with this one, you can really get these to look almost exactly the same as one another. Now, these exercises are going to do something very interesting without you actually knowing it. Like we talked about, it's going to take something that you're likely very comfortable with, like the fillet joint or the lap joint. You may have done it many times before. However, flipping things around and then practicing side for side between the two grips, this is a way that you can take something relatively straightforward that you may be familiar with and now turn it into something and make it challenging all over again. With everything that we do, we always want to find ways that we can make things more interesting and challenging ourselves. The struggle of learning something new is actually what makes you progress as a TIG welder. And in most cases, this is going to do a lot more for your skill and consistency overall than just putting blind reps in doing the same thing over and over. If you are just getting going with learning how to TIG weld aluminum, I absolutely recommend that you follow some kind of set curriculum to learn. I went through a bunch of different curriculums when I was going to school for this stuff. And the cool thing is, is that nowadays you can get your own machine for your own home shop or whatever, and you can do this and learn it on your own now. My new textbook is absolutely mind blowing as far as the curriculum that it offers. That's right, it's an actual program, not just a book that you read. It'll take you from fully understanding the machine that you're using, torch, tungsten preparation, basic exercises, all the way to the more advanced stuff near the end. And these ones are actually almost sold out already. You scan the QR code that comes on the bookmark like this here, and it opens a complete community where you follow along with video lessons, a complete online course to follow the book page by page, chapter by chapter. And then we all hang out and we all talk in there. It's like a social media site without any dickheads hanging out. I would highly recommend jumping on these while they are available. It's not going to be much longer. Do a random act of kindness for a stranger today. I'm Dusty James, Phil and Chill. We will talk soon. Peace.